time to tackle Disney's latest man-hating production, which they all are at this point. And what's the story about? Evil man is in power and he's holding people back. And our heroine, who's a young girl, of course, comes in, takes over and does everything right. Okay. Here's proof of it in the trailer. Come with me. The wishes of Rosas. Wow. People give their wishes to me, and I grant the wishes I am sure are good for Rosas. Some of these will never be granted. Not some. Most. They deserve more than... I me. decide what everyone deserves. See, there's the evil man, right? He's in control. And notice he's the villain. Even though what he says is probably true. You know what's going on here? In whoever these feminist women are who made this story up came up against a man who actually gave him the harsh reality of life. And so since they never had to deal with any real obstacles in their life, they're angry. This guy's just supposed to give them whatever they demand. That's what this story roots from. Okay? Now, we'll get into this young lady, Jess, Jester Bell. And we'll see what she has to say about it. Let's uh, back up here. You will notice she has that Barbie character up here. Uh, any woman who actually likes this person and in the Barbie movie is a feminist and a man hater, right? <laughs> and of course, Loki, the, the reformed bad boy, and Harley Quinn, who's whole existence uh, circles around her uh, being a what, what is it a serial killer fangirl okay so it says everything you need to know about Jester Bell studio should be a pretty big deal but it doesn't appear that disney is celebrating it in the right way as has been pointed out on twitter this is pretty much the weakest slate of films that they've ever put out at least well there's actually only one weak film the other three are man-haters, right? This one, the Marvels, definitely. And, of course, this is one where the hero Ant-Man is ousted by a teenage girl, of course. And, of course, this latest man-hating. So, I mean, this is par for the course. Jester Bell, Disney has been taken over by feminists. It's a hate movement against men. These are all, for the most part, I haven't seen this one. But the other three are definitely man-hating films. At least in recent memory, Indiana Jones, The Marvels, Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantum Mania. So many films Disney has put out this year, so many productions, and I can't really think of a production that they put out that was really a massive hit. I guess you could say Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Apart from that, I think... Well, of course, because it's a hate movement that's running it, Jester Bell. And they can't make anything good. Evil cannot produce good. Elemental is the only other notable success where it kind of had a bounce back after a soft opening weekend. But now we have Wish. And this is from Disney Animation Studios proper, not from Pixar, not from Marvel. So this film is meant to be their big celebration of their company on its 100-year anniversary. It's supposed to represent everything, everything positive that the company is supposed to be about. So it Well, they can't, lady. Because again, it's a feminist hate movement in control, isn't it? So, of course, it came out shit. Must be pretty frightening for Disney to see it get one of their lowest Rotten Tomatoes scores ever. But it I. It doesn't frighten them. It does frighten them. Look, they've been doing this for almost a decade now, if not a decade. They're fine with this. This is their goal. The feminists are burning Disney to the ground. I just watched the movie myself, and I'm going to discuss here, is it as bad as critics say? Both it's terrible because it's a piece of hate propaganda. It's as bad as you can possibly get it. Both absolutely yes and no. I can completely understand... Not what yes and no, just yes. I would rather watch the room 
over any of these Disney productions. Because the room, as bad as it is, isn't trying to insult me as a person. Why they gave it such a low score. Because this is just such a problematic film on so many levels, where I think it was made with good intentions. I think that it no, was made... No, it was not. If you think that, it proves that you are a man-hater. It was definitely made with the worst intentions. It's a hate film. It's because it's not pointed towards your gender that you think there's some good into it or that there must be good intentions. Like I said, guys, and it, see what she's got in the back here? This is a man-hater herself. If this was directed towards the female sex who are hypersensitive over this, they would never, ever say there was anything good about the film with a lot of consideration for the history of Disney and their productions, but it just collapses in execution. Now, the number one problem with this film is- the Wrong again. Their execution was to spit on the male identity. They did that perfectly, Chester Bell. Script, and it can be a little complicated to explain unless you've seen the movie, but I'm gonna try to explain. For a hundred years or so, Disney has had this theme. It's, it's a very optimistic, innocent, simple theme. It's that you should achieve your dream, that a dream is a very important thing, and that you should go out and try to make it happen. And it's and they've always portrayed this in a very innocent way, kind of trying to look at the best of people and the best that they can achieve. Now, this theme has been woven around subtly through a lot of- but That's not in this film, though, is it? Because in this film, what is it? Let's bring this up here. In this film, it's all about people asking another person to fulfill their dreams, aren't they? They're not fulfilling their own dreams. They're coming to this guy and saying, give me something for free, right? Which actually makes sense in a feminist mindset, in a woman's mindset. Women come to men and say, give me something for free. Jester Bell, they don't go out and capture their dreams on their own, right? their films. In fact, usually a Disney movie will be about a protagonist in a bad situation or dissatisfied with their life or feeling that they don't have a place that they belong and going out and finding their place or finding a better life from themselves, etc. Now, Wish tries to make its movie exactly about the theme and the- No, it doesn't because it's not that that's not its theme. And you are purposely not seeing that because, again, this hatred is not directed towards you as a person. The way it does it is it's very, very on the nose. All of the mechanics of this movie play into that theme. For example, when you get into the film, the premise of this movie is that there is a town called Roses, and each of the inhabitants has a certain wish that gives them life and makes them who they are. And by their 18th birthday, they are asked to give up that wish, and it may or may not be granted by the king, which he decides whether they will or not be by what he thinks is best. Essentially, he doesn't grant the wishes that threaten him. So, uh... Yeah, yeah. See, it's all about the man is in power and he's afraid. He's a little man who's afraid. However, it's really about not granting wishes that are possible or might hurt other people, right? And she's even going to mention that. A lot of people were coming after this film and criticizing it, saying, isn't the bad guy the good guy, knowing that not every wish can be granted, that not every wish is good? Well, the movie Exactly. And that's true. And again, this is what it is. These feminist women who are in control of Disney never had to deal with obstacles in their life ever. Uh, they want everything for free. They probably had some crazy wish that they can't fulfill. And some man who does have to deal with obstacles, who does have to deal with the harshness of life, told her a harsh truth. No, dear, you cannot be a dancer. You've got two left feet. You're, you're a complete cr clutch. Or sorry, <laughs> clutch, uh, clots. You can't dance. The movie takes a much more simplistic take than that. It does not portray the wishes as bad things. It's always stuff like, well, this person wants to fly, or this person wants to uh, make great music, or something like that. And if it was all about getting your dreams, how come these people don't go out and, again, earn their dreams? Right? They just come to this man and want them for free. Right? And that is, the theme it's going for is not that you should get everything that you want. The theme it's going for is actually uh, freedom, free will versus authoritarianism, because... Well, no. It's what they're saying is, 
the man is evil. He's in charge. He's an evil person. He has to be disposed and put in a young girl. And by the way, Jester Bell, ever notice these feminists are very ableist, aren't they? Oh, sorry. Did I say ableist? I meant ageist. They're ageist. They don't like older women. Take a look at the Ant in the Wash. Ant Man's supposed to be a hero. He's pushed aside for a teenage girl. And that even includes the older woman who's a hero. She doesn't get the shine. They replace, they supplant both these people with the teenage girl, right? Because the old uh, fantasy is that you're a perpetual teenage girl who finds the prince, the high status man to leech off of. Now, now it's to be the perpetual teenage girl who uh, disposes of the man. She, he's no longer of any use, so she tosses him aside. She becomes the queen. How are the queens, the grown woman, the mature woman treated? Well, she's just the lackey of the evil man, right? So these sexist feminists are also racist and they're ageist. The king decides what is best for everyone and what everybody should be able to even try to do. And the movie is arguing that people should have the ability to make their own decisions with what they want to pursue in life. And so it is. Yeah, but at the same time, these people aren't earning it. They're just coming to this guy, asking for free. He's the one with the power. Should he not decide, right? Not a bad theme. Once again, the problem is how on the nose it is, because watching the film, I'm like, okay, how does that work? Somebody's wish is this bubble that that comes out of them and is something that if that they can forget if it's taken away and if it's crushed, then their soul is crushed. And once again, it's it's playing into that theme about how important wishes in real life and dreams in real life are. Yeah, he's crushing their dreams. Exactly. Exactly. That's how the man is seen. And by the way, again, I think this is in real life. Some of these feminist women who never had to achieve anything in their life want an unrealistic fantasy of what, what they're going to do, and some guy bursts their bubble. So this is feminist hatred revenge on mature men but it's so on the nose in the movie as it's trying to also be the mechanics and logic of the film that it just doesn't make sense. And yes, it's it does. It doesn't have to make sense. It just has the man is bad. The girl is good. Or just the man is bad. <laughs> and so the mechanics all work to that end. So it all makes sense. It's all magic, so there should be some leeway where, it, leeway where it doesn't have to be completely logical, but it got to the point where none of it was making sense. Uh, and the movie will just introduce all these concepts and not really develop them fully before moving on to some other concept that it introduces, like uh, the wishing star comes down, and I wish that it would have been, I wish that it would have been better set up for how um, Asha wishes on the star and how that works, because it just comes down from the heavens and starts... Uh, throwing all this magic around and making animals talk and all that kind of stuff and then yeah notice that so this woman here this girl i can't even bother remember her name just about how come she didn't go to people and say there's this wishing star why don't you go to the wishing star instead of going to the king she doesn't really do that though doesn't she there's a song and this is where the movie lost me because I was enjoying it in the beginning and then it lost me where there's a song about how actually everyone is a star and everyone has hope inside of them and, and that really comes into play later on and once again it's like all of these it, it does it loses you because you don't want you you're in denial about the people who, who uh, are making this production these women these hate mongers are the lowest of the low in humanity and they want to believe they're special, and they aren't. So that's why the song is there.
these themes that Disney has tried to portray throughout their films to spelled out very on the nose and it kind of sacrifices the logic of the story in order to get these things out. And once again, you could tell that the intentions were in the... It's, it's only illogical to you because you're saying their intentions are good. And this tells me, just about that your intentions are bad. Because for you to see this man-hating film as good intentioned shows me where your heart is. Again, if this hate was directed to your gender, you would recognize it immediately. In the right place, but everything is underdeveloped. Everything is underbaked. Um, the characters I thought really needed more development, especially the king. I wasn't really understanding why he became so evil. I understand that he because he was born evil. <laughs> this is a hate movement. Look, how would the Nazis portray the Jews? Is is non-human, right? So feminist, uh, they portray men as non-human. He's not a human being. He, he was born male. He's evil. What's there not to understand? That is his character. He fears losing his power because of his upbringing, but he goes to some really dark places, and he goes from someone who's able to put on this facade to someone who is I I insecure and just falls apart in a second. And so I want more development on him. Well, that's the idea. Like, the idea is that men are evil, and any good face we have put on is just that. It's a mask. It's, we're hiding our, our true selves, right? I want more development on the main character because uh, there, there's been some discussion recently about how Disney is kind of making the same Disney princess that's just the adorable character over and over. Yeah, that's right. Let me show you. This is how thrilling this character is. Just uh, one second. Let me catch my breath. <laughs> Once upon a That's really funny. That's funny. That's what they're putting in for the comedy for the trailer, right? It's so funny. She's a goofball and she's late. You know why it's like that, Jester Bell? It's because the, the women who make this production have no personality. They've never developed any. Again, they are a group of people that have never striven for anything, that have never had any obstacles put in their life. They have zero character. And so the characters they make have zero character. That's right over again and Asha is slightly different she's still a quirky princess but she has this revolutionary aspect to her and I'm like okay I want it to be developed why she has that aspect when no one else does but it never was and that's the real problem of the movie is once again well that's that's because she's an insert right she's an insert character for the women who make the these films right they're a bunch of nobodies they insert themselves and they're quirky and they're right without any kind of, you know, development or struggle. Yeah. Again, very on the nose and it just underdevelops a lot of stuff and then it just moves up to the next thing and the next thing and just leaves so much underdeveloped. Speaking of on the nose, there are a lot of references to Disney stuff in, in this movie and some of it is fun, but some of this is like, eh, like uh, the bear who talks is named John and the deer he makes friends with name is Bambi. We see Thumper in the movie. We see somebody creating a dress and it's the dress from Sleeping Beauty. Asha's friends are patterned off the seven dwarves. Asha of course they are because these women who make these hate mongers don't have creative a talent at all. They can only rehash what's already been done. What was was that uh, that uh, phrase I keep seeing guys use to these feminist monsters? They say evil cannot create; it can only mock. And they're actually right. They use the Lord of the Rings. These feminists are evil, period, and they can't create anything on their own. They can only take what's already been done and make a mockery out of it. Asha is wearing the fairy godmother's uh, gown and is using a wand near the end, and it's even implied she becomes the fairy godmother. Of exactly. It's implied that she becomes the fairy godmother. When that washing star comes down, she doesn't run to everybody and say, everybody, you don't need to go to the king. Go get your wishes from here. 
she takes the king's place. She becomes the arbiter of whose wishes get granted. So that right? That's the thing, right? So this isn't about everyone getting their wish. It's the woman taking charge. Thank you for admitting that. Now, I don't think we need to go any further. This is what Disney is. It's a feminist-controlled hate movement. Because, well, feminism is a hate movement. And that's all it can produce now. So, hey, you're welcome. You know now. 